Ghostly Legends. It was a chilly fall evening when my friends and I decided to explore the Enoch Poor House. We had heard stories of strange noises and apparitions in the old abandoned building and were intrigued by the possibility of encountering the supernatural. As we approached the house, we noticed the gate was partially open. We hesitated for a moment, but our curiosity got the best of us, and we pushed through the gate and stepped onto the overgrown lawn. The house was a decrepit three-story Victorian mansion, its windows boarded up and the paint peeling off the walls. We made our way to the front door which was partially open and cautiously entered. Immediately a wave of musty damp air hit us and we could hear the sound of our footsteps echoing through the empty rooms. We turned on our flashlights and began exploring the house, taking in the antique furniture and creepy atmosphere. As we made our way up to the second floor, we heard the faint sound of footsteps and the rustling of fabric. It was a soft, almost ethereal sound, like someone moving slowly and deliberately. We followed the sound to a room with a boarded up window. Suddenly the sound became louder, and we could hear the faint sound of a woman's voice singing. The melody was haunting and beautiful, a lullaby that seemed to transcend time. As we approached the room, the singing became louder, and we could make out the words, but they were in a language we didn't understand. Suddenly, a gust of wind blew open the boarded up window, and we saw the figure of a woman in a long flowing dress. She was singing a haunting melody and seemed to be lost in her own world. We approached the woman, but as we got closer she vanished into thin air. We felt a chill run down our spines as we realized we were standing in the presence of a ghost. Suddenly, we heard the sound of a baby crying from the room next door. We cautiously made our way to the room and found an old wooden cradle with a crying baby inside. The baby's cries grew louder and louder, and we noticed that its eyes were bright red and glowing in the darkness. We decided to leave the house and get some fresh air, but as we descended the stairs, we heard a loud banging sound coming from the front door. It felt like something was holding the door shut from the other side. We turned around and saw the ghostly figure of the woman standing at the top of the stairs, watching us with a sinister grin on her face. We could feel her cold breath on our necks as she whispered something in a language we didn't understand. Suddenly the floorboards beneath us gave way and we fell into a dark basement. We landed on top of each other, and I heard a sickening crack as my friend's arm broke on impact. We lay there in the darkness, injured and terrified, listening to the sound of the woman's laughter echoing through the house. It felt like hours before we managed to crawl our way out of the basement and stumble into the night. Over the next few days, we couldn't shake the memory of what we had seen and heard. We decided to do some research on the history of the Enoch Poor House and the ghosts that we had encountered. We discovered that the house had been built in the 1800s by a wealthy family, the Smiths. They had lived there for many years, but tragedy had struck the family when the mother, Mary Smith, died in childbirth in the same room where we had found the crying baby. Her death had deeply affected the family, and they had become increasingly reclusive and withdrawn in the years that followed. The baby, a girl named Abigail had survived and been raised by her father Charles Smith and her older brother William. However, their grief over Mary's death had never truly subsided 
and they had become increasingly obsessed with the idea of communicating with her spirit. William had spent countless hours in the same room where his mother had died trying to contact her through seances and other spiritual practices. Abigail, on the other hand, had become increasingly withdrawn and melancholic. She had never married or had children, and she had spent most of her life in the house caring for her brother and trying to keep the family legacy alive. As we delved deeper into the history of the house and its former inhabitants, we began to understand the significance of our encounter with the ghosts. The woman we had seen was Mary Smith, the mother who had died in childbirth. Her singing was a lullaby that she had sung to her children when they were babies. The crying baby we had found was Abigail, the daughter who had survived but had been traumatized by her mother's death. Her glowing red eyes were a manifestation of her pain and grief. The tragedy of the Smith family was palpable, and we couldn't help but feel a sense of sorrow and compassion for the ghosts we had encountered. We realized that our intrusion into their private grief had been a mistake, and we vowed never to return to the Enoch poorhouse. The memory of our encounter with the ghosts stayed with us for years to come, a haunting reminder of the fragility of life and the power of the supernatural. We often wondered if the ghosts of the Smith family still haunted the old mansion, trapped in a timeless realm of pain and sorrow. But we knew that we could never truly understand their pain or their story and we could only hope that they had found peace in the afterlife.